One Fund, on point for today, the experts to talk about it. Welcome to the ETF of the week. Yes, this is the ETF of the week where you get the latest take from the experts at Vetify, a company and a website that has developed everything you need to be a smarter, savvier, better investor in exchange traded funds. Check out their tools and their research and their news for yourself by going to vetify.com. Joining me now, Tom Lydon. He is vice chairman at Vetify. Tom, it is great to chat with you again. Great to be back. Thanks, Chuck. Your ETF of the week is the PIMCO Enhanced Short Maturity Active Exchange Traded Fund, ticker symbol M-I-N-T. M-I-N-T, Mint, the PIMCO Enhanced Short Maturity Active ETF. Tom, really interesting time for this pick because everybody's waiting for the Fed to start cutting rates. We've seen rates generally coming down, but the big cuts are coming. And I talked to a lot of investors about, do they want short maturities or do they want to lengthen their maturities, even though we still have an inverted yield curve? Most are telling me they want to lengthen maturities right about now. So why are you looking at short durations right now? Great question, Chuck. So we have talked in the last three months about all the money that's on the sidelines. Uh, JP Morgan's got 25% of their managed accounts in cash. Goldman Sachs, 30%. And that's great as long as you're making money when you have money on the sidelines. Again, just a couple short months ago, money market funds were paying 5%. Today, it's a lot less because even though the Fed hasn't cut rates, in anticipation of rate cuts that might be coming, as you pointed out, we're already seeing the bond market kind of come back to surface. And, and with that in mind, even though your money's safe and even though you're getting a decent yield, it doesn't feel as good as it was just a few months ago. All right. So there are other opportunities out there outside of money market funds. Yes, you could go longer maturity. And if rates do get cut with longer maturity, especially in corporates and high yields, you could actually have some appreciation in your bond portfolio as well. But the whole idea about keeping money safe or keeping your powder dry is not having that volatility. And you don't want to expose yourself as you go longer maturity to volatility in the market, because who knows, we might see inflation rear its ugly head again. With that being said, there are a lot of great fund managers out there that play in the short maturity space. So still duration that might be one to six months, one to eight months. And not only they're buying treasuries that you might see in money market funds, but they can also put corporates, high yields, even muni sometimes into that portfolio mix that can keep the stability of the portfolio intact, but also provide some enhanced yield. So, for example, if your money market fund today is paying 4%, you look at Mint and it's paying close to 5.5%. Is it worth that little added risk? I think so, because you've got some real seasoned portfolio managers behind it who've done very, very well, not only in rising markets, but especially in declining interest rate markets. PIMCO was really the first company to come out with actively managed bond funds. And there are times here on the ETF of the week where we tend to look at what's new and what's newfangled. But as the guys who kind of originated the space, is there a benefit to picking the old guard manager when you're looking at an actively managed bond fund? Well, just like uh, the way we used to look at the fund companies, uh, the mutual fund companies, the, the ratings, the performance, all that matters. And if you go back and you see how fixed income managers performed in rising markets and how they perform in, in declining interest rate markets, that means something. Uh, at the same time, these ETFs weren't just launched yesterday. They've put up some pretty good track records and have done exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh, so with that in mind, Chuck, look, we know a lot of advisors are working with clients as we go into this new year, talking about the money that they had on the sidelines for their clients. And even though it might have been the money market funds, that's great. But those yields aren't there today. So guess what? They're starting to, yes, maybe go a little longer maturity, 
maybe go more active, maybe go more active in areas that PIMCO plays in or other fixed income managers play in to squeeze out a little bit more yield. Boy, you know, if we're in a situation where they can maintain that five, five and a half percent yield in a declining rate environment where money market rates might get in the threes area, that's going to be pretty attractive. I have to say, Tom, when you said that this was your pick, here I am thinking short maturities. But of course, compared to money market funds, yes, it's short maturities, but they're longer maturities than money market funds. So so it is lengthening maturities. I would not imagine that a pick like this one is really a 200-day moving average play. This is really more a where are you parking your short-term money and when do you need that money to go? But I could be wrong about that based on the trend. So so is there much trend following to do in a fund like this one? I think you're right, Chuck. It's more of a cash management discussion. Um, I think we're still scratching our heads when really 60-40 has come back to life uh, and, and for all the right reasons. But still, there's over $7 trillion on the sidelines in money market funds. And there's $8 trillion in passbook accounts or uh, savings accounts in banks, eight trillion dollars, so fifteen trillion dollars total. That's getting not that much of a return. I mean, money market funds okay now, but you know what banks are paying if you don't designate that you put it in a money market fund or even a CD. So investors, especially if they feel more confident about the market, and as we look to a new year. If we do see declining rates, if that helps fuel, fuel not only the fixed income market, but also the equity market, great. But if people want to say to themselves, that's fine, I still want to keep a chunk on the sidelines, here's a great option that would maintain those higher yields if you're planning for an extended period to always have some powder dry. I will give our audience some fair credit that that they're investors who know a lot about what they're doing. This is the kind of pick that, oh, by the way, maybe the thing that they're telling their family members about who have a lot more money on the sidelines and who are nervous. So there then has to be one question that they've got to be prepared to answer, which is, you know, if you're telling your your octogenarian mother or father, come on, get a little bit more return and do this, the response they're going to give you is, yeah, but in my bank, I've got FDIC insurance and I don't worry. Obviously, you're not exactly worried about defaults. But you got to say something, right? Like, I mean, how do you explain to them? Yeah, this is that equivalent. And you don't worry about the fact that there's not FDIC insurance on. Well, um, you know, FDIC insurance is the, really the security around the bank, the bank itself. I think most people today feel very, very comfortable with these established brokerage companies, the Fidelities of the world, the Schwabs of the world, you know, even the bigger companies, the Morgan Stanley's, the wirehouse firms, and all of them offer a whole variety of choices. It really comes down to not is my bank going to be solvent in the future. It's more about is my money going to be less volatile in the future while it's also kicking off a decent return. So uh, we went through a banking crisis in the, in the last year. I think we learned something from that. I think the government did a great job of shoring up uh, maybe a one-off situation um, th that was a little bit skeptical in nature. But now, not only markets feel good on the equity and fixed income side, but the banking system seems pretty much together as well. Again, I think, I, I think we'd concentrate more on the investment vehicle itself as opposed to the umbrella that it's sitting under. And that's why we're focused this week on Mint, the PIMCO Enhanced Short Maturity Active ETF. The ETF of the week, from Tom Lydon at Vetify. Tom, great stuff as always. Talk to you again soon. Thanks, Chuck. The ETF of the week is a joint production of Vetify and Money Life with Chuck Jaffe. Yep, that's me. And you can learn all about my hour-long weekday podcast by going to moneylifeshow.com or by searching on your favorite podcast app. To learn more about investing in exchange-traded funds, check out everything they've got for you at vetify.com. They're on Twitter at Veta underscore Fi. And Tom Lydon's on Twitter too. He's my guest. He's on Twitter or X at Tom Lydon. The ETF of the week is here for you every Thursday. And we hope you'll make sure you don't miss one by subscribing along on your favorite podcast app. 
For Tom Lydon and Betify, I am Chuck Jaffe. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again next week. And until then, happy investing, everybody.